for our next topic, which is about using AI to diagnose any issue, really, that comes up in a spacecraft that's traveling through deep space. So we've got to give a huge shout out to Ivana Gizzi. Um, she's a Pathways intern at NASA's Goddard Center, and so she's an intern, and this research was her project, her development, and it's making That's headlines awesome. all around. So, Ivana, you're killing it. We're huge fans. Um, what she discovered, you know, her, what her project was, is called RACER, uh, Research and in Artificial it- Intelligence for Spacecraft Resilience, the acronym's RACER. Um, basically Perfect what RACER acronym, is, by the way. Big yeah. fan of that acronym. Love it. Um, Basically, right now, spacecrafts on their own, when there's an issue, they basically have this reporting system like a check engine light on your car. So it knows when something is wrong and a light turns on saying something is wrong. But that's the extent of it. It doesn't tell you what is causing the issue. It doesn't tell you how to fix it with, you know, save a few very, very niche scenarios. Spacecrafts can't diagnose or fix the issues on their own. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, why we have this cliche, Houston, we have a problem. Um, is because something goes wrong in the spacecraft. They can't figure it out there, so they let mission control know on the ground, and they do all the diagnostics, and they try to figure that out. Okay. Um, What Ivana discovered is, or what she's been working on, is making this project called RACER, and RACER's capability will basically replace the human intervention, you know, like taking your car to the mechanic and saying, hey, my check engine light is on. Can you tell me what's wrong and how can I fix it? RACER can do that using AI. So it can look at the spacecraft, look at all the different parameters, look at the context of the situation and try to get a root cause analysis, kind of like a detective with a whodunit, you know, like figure out, you know, in clue who killed who in what room using what apparatus. This is what RACER can do with inside the spacecraft. Dude, this is so much like um, the research coming out of Carnegie Mellon. I think it was PhD student Prithvi Akaria. He did the IoT device that could analyze the diagnostic codes of cars, actually. Perfect that you brought it yeah. up. And do a similar analysis. I think, what? Oh, geez. Like episode eight, nine? Yeah. Probably eight. Yeah, I think it's episode eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, wow. And since then, Prithvi's become a huge friend of the pod. So shout we, out. We love you, Prithvi. Yeah, <laughs> shout out. Um, but. Um, it's very, very similar. So I'll break down uh, Ivana's approach. And basically, it's a two-headed approach using machine learning and then classical AI. Okay. And I want to talk a little bit about the distinction between the two as we go into that. So I'll first go into the machine learning, which is most similar to what we were talking about in episode eight with Prithvi's research. Um, they've got a ton of data on all the spacecraft that have failed and why they failed and what caused it and what the symptoms were. So using machine learning, which is great for using large sets of previous data and making inferences between those sets of data. Um, She used machine learning to learn off the thousands of data points of what the previous symptoms were when a spacecraft failed and what the cause of that symptom was. So this machine learning algorithm learned all those relationships between symptoms and causes. So then when a familiar set of symptoms comes up, it can with very high likelihood predict what's wrong with the spacecraft and how to fix it. That makes sense. Um, It's, super rigorous and it works really well for symptoms that have already appeared in the past and they already have data for but you know when you're developing new systems and you're sending spacecraft to deep space and like new areas where new symptoms might pop up or new issues might pop up that's not the silver bullet so you need something else to make it more rigorous so she's using classical ai for that which is really really good at you know transforming human knowledge or human thought processes and putting it into a declarative form that a computer can understand. So the machine learning is great for the previous past data and she's using classical AI to predict future failures and transfer into a computer language how the engineers that design the system might diagnose and fix those failures. Okay. So by interviewing engineers and understanding what their possible causes of failure are for the spacecraft and what the possible solutions for that could be, she's used classical AI to kind of provide a safety net for those new symptoms that pop up that haven't been detected before and also try to understand how we can fix those and do it all autonomously. So the benefits of this uh, Razor system are like twofold. You have the machine learning that can detect uh, multiple things, triggers that are happening at once and relate them to an event that's already happened before. And then you have the AI component that takes the thought process of an actual engineer and applies it to software so that when something comes up that we haven't seen before, it can think through what's actually causing it. Exactly. So like one of the engineering and technology directors at NASA Goddard said that uh, Ivana's work, Razor, is like, 
I don't know. It's like taking one of their engineers and all their thought processes and, you know, how they might diagnose something and copy pasting a subset of their brain and putting it inside the spacecraft. Gotcha. Um, and that, that'll be really useful specifically for like small CubeSats, like tiny satellites that are unmanned and they go out into deep space and they do a bunch of monitoring on their own where you don't have a human on board that can do a diagnosis right. or you've got thousands and thousands of these satellites and you don't want mission control to have to diagnose every single one of these. Um, right. It's a great application for those, for those situations where you want these satellites to be able to autonomously diagnose what's wrong and potentially take corrective action. Um, without any human intervention at all. So have they tested that? Have, have they tested the system's capability of effectively identifying issues? No. So the system hasn't been sent into space on any satellite yet. But okay. the same engineering director I was talking about that says it's like taking copy paste of one of their best engineers. Mm -hmm. He said the next step for Racer is putting it on a CubeSat and spending it, sending it into space. So I'm really excited to see how it does. Um, Likewise, and yeah. They're talking a lot about the implications of this moving forward, which is really exciting too. Um, I know we talk a lot about AI. We talk a lot about technology. We don't always often talk about how the humans interacting with that or the culture surrounding that technology might be impacted by it. The human-machine um, interaction. That's always a exactly. big topic. HMI is very, very yeah. interesting, and I feel like it's kind of not, it's not highlighted enough. But in this case, they talked about it, and they said the biggest hurdle to the implementation of this racer system will probably not be the actual AI, the actual technology. Um, they have confidence in Racer and what Ivana's work is, but the biggest issue they see is actually a culture issue within NASA because most issues, you know, that cliche, Houston, we have a problem. Most issues are handled by humans on the ground at mission control. Gotcha. And this will be a step-by-step -step approach for them to like slowly let off the reins and kind of let the satellite figure itself out in space rather than having the engineers on the ground involved.